for many of these boats today. Extraordinary that we saw one. Such a massive world best time uh, in the last event, but probably not in the A final here at the Lightweight Men's Four. This could be a medal chance for Germany. I think uh, their bronze medal there in the PR1 women's single skull was perhaps their first uh, medal of the regatta. Well, traditionally a very strong rowing nation, the Germans. We will have the eight later on today. But now it's about the lightweight men's fall, and we've got the crew from Hungary. Um, they were quite slow early in the regatta, but then again so were their men's coxed pair, who uh, were slow in the heats and then produced for me what's been the race of the, uh, the regatta so far with an incredible sprint finish. If you have a look at the American crew, um, limited experience internationally, although they've rowed domestically and they're a mature crew. And then in lane three, the crew from China. Three of this crew were in the Coxless Four in Rio, which finished in eighth position. In lane four, we've got that crew that um, Sarah was speaking about, the German Four. They're far more experienced internationally, rowing in the men's eight, men's four. Jonathan Koch was in the Coxless Four in Rio that finished ninth. He's sitting in the three seat today, the only survivor from that crew. And then the crew from Russia here. One through to collect this favoured lane. They were successful at the European Championships. But it was the Italian crew who won at Lucerne, the last race these crews will have competed in. And I think the Italian team's on a bit of a roll. And uh, could be a surprise nation to challenge Australia, perhaps at the top of the table. Let's see. We're away. They're very fast starters. We're used to seeing from the Italians with that signature, really short, aggressive, punchy first stroke. Uh, a little bit shorter on the slide than the other crews who take a little while longer to get up to speed. But it's the Italians blasting out in the favoured lane in lane six, looking to add another gold medal to the Italian medal tally. Yeah, and just as these lightweight fours blast off the start, I have to say uh, the tinge with sadness. Uh, there's a proposal at the FISA Council meeting on Monday after this event that this lightweight men's falls be dropped from the World Championship program immediately and replaced by the women's lightweight pair and uh, for gender equality. So you just think of all those famous crews we've seen, the South Africans with Lawrence and Julia at Stroke in London, Eskild Eberson, the Danish lightweight, and uh, the French who won back in Sydney, I think. Uh, great Italians who took the bronze in Athens and all that sort of heritage of lightweight men's fours this is the last time we will ever see probably the event at the World Championships. So a momentous race this could be and uh, the Italians went out there fast but it's the German crew and the Chinese crew who look like they've um, settled into a better pace and are now pressing as we're coming up through this first 500. The Chinese looking really aggressive but nice and long over there on the far side of the course. Here we see the Russians on screen just struggling with the pace a little bit, it sees three leaders, the Italians through the 500, followed by China, followed by Germany. And one of the things we've seen in this regatta, throughout the regatta, and I think particularly from these Italian crews, we think they've gone out hard, we think they're going to lead and then get rowed through, but they seem to keep this high stroke rate going and then be able to kick on in the last 1,000, in the last 500, and we've seen some incredible sprint finishes with crews coming up over the line, well over 40 strokes a minute. Yeah. Wow. We'll have a look here at the uh, German crew. There is the German stroke man, Julius Peschel, 26 years of age, from uh, Germania Rudeverein. And the Germans up high, coached by Ralf Hormann. But for me, the experienced crew in this race, the Chinese over there at the top of your picture in red and yellow, they've got that Olympic experience that uh, Greg Searle talk about in fact two of them were in the London 2012 Olympics uh, Wang Chexin and Yu Chigang so let's not underwrite the Chinese and you can see they're starting to get a little messy now as this little crosswind is starting to cause a bit of a ripple on the water a little bit of water being thrown up so the crews are going to have to be pretty tidy with the work that they're doing here particularly up at almost 40 strokes a minute these three leading crews still right up there and as you said Greg we're used to seeing crews start to settle at this point uh, and, and typically not be able to kick on from rate 40, but anything can happen at this regatta as we've seen. 
Well, the Italians have now settled into that pace. They're holding this one, this half boat length lead. They're going along at 40 strokes a minute. Um, as you say, Sarah, good call that this crosswind could now start to affect the crews. Let's remember one of these athletes, usually the person stroke on the left of the screen, has a rudder attached to their foot. So they will be trying to control the, the boat and they'll be wanting to just keep that toe pointing towards the left to keep the boat in the center of the lane and not allow it to drift towards the buoy line to the right. And none of these boats are in danger of doing that at this stage. And it is the Italians who I think are still rowing really nice and long and they're the fastest boat on the course. Yeah, they look beautiful, don't they? There we've seen a stroke, uh, Piero, I'm just struggling with his name, uh, Sigloggi, in the stroke seat, 23 years of age, and more experienced Lorenzo Tedesco behind him, and then uh, Leone Barbero. There's a look at the Chinese. Greg, you remember the championships you were at in... Uh, back in Hamilton in New Zealand in 2010, and the Chinese four got that bronze medal in the incredibly close race. Everyone was in you know, a few hundredths of a second. Well, uh, Yu Chigang, he was in that boat, the three man in the Chinese crew, you see him with the green sunglasses. He's so experienced in this event. He's tasted medal glory at the World Championships, and this could be a great sign off for him. And we saw him just take that look over his left shoulder there to see where those Italians were, and they need that experience now as we're coming in with 500 to go. I think the Italians have made a decisive move on with that increased boat speed with 500 to go. That's a big move from the Italians to establish themselves, but look at this race that's happening in the middle of the course. The Russians in fourth. They're currently moving up and challenging the, uh, the Germans. The Germans are trying to hang in there, but for me, they look like they're starting to go. I don't think that they've got a response to this big push coming from Russia as these two crews are starting to bear down down on the Chinese now. This is going to be a typical lightweight men's four finish, I think, where the field all starts to compress. Look at these three crews drawing level now with about 350 metres to go. Yeah, the Russians uh, won that final Olympic qualification together last year to get a place in the Olympics. And then, of course, the Russian doping scandal ruled them out. They're close on the boys. Look at that. Did they touch the boys there? They're going right over them. They want to steer off those boys. You heard Sarah Cook talk about the steering. Just 250 metres to go. Pain on the faces. Well, what a fantastic race we've got for the silver and bronze medal going on. The Italians look imperious out in front, rowing so long. But it's now down to the sprinting speed, and I think it is the Russians who've got the advantage here as we've got about 150 metres left. Wow, what a patient race there for the Russians. They have done a decisive blow here. They're up at 41 strokes a minute. China have gone. They're at 45 strokes a minute, and they have nothing left. The Germans are coming through with the Russians. Wow, the Chinese, they look so comfortable in silver, and they're going to be on the wrong side of this. Well, they're coming down to the line. There's now only two or three strokes left. And it is the Italians on the near side of the screen who take back this gold medal ahead of Russia, Germany, and is the crew from the People's Republic of China who have to settle for fourth in what is quite possibly the last ever lightweight men's four race at the World Championships. This crew could be reigning world champions for the rest of their lives. Absolutely. Exhaustion. Well, there's, there's the man, the stroke of the Russian four, Aleski Vakulin, crossing himself, the 24-year-old. Behind him, Alexander Chelkin, exhausted. The two men in the German boat, Sven Kessler. And I thought the Germans foot. were out of it in that race. That, that was an incredible comeback. I thought that they were out of it. The Russians were coming through. I thought China was comfortable. What a change over in the last 150 metres there to see China miss out. And it's a lovely comparison, really, to see the crews going off the start. Um, I just think the it Italians, I'm going to use the word, are so sympathetic to the water. that They're, they're so, no it's so good the way they just pick the water up um, and then move the boat past. Um, and the, the Chinese, for me, just looks a little bit more aggressive, and that's going to cause a little bit more pain as we see someone flicking through the holiday snaps. Um, what they're seeing here out on the water, this fantastic racing, looking in at the Russian crew. Just how, how well drilled lightweight fours are and have been um, for the last 20 or so years we've seen that as the Olympic event. A lot of crews using the concept two skinny blades with the narrow shafts here. Favoured now by most crews, although I think the Italians are using the normal shafts by the looks of things. They are, and you can see the little orange clams there. Um, so the, it just inside the button, the little orange clam that allows you to change your gearing. So you could just slip that little orange clam inside the blue gate, blue button rather, and uh, give yourself slightly different leverage. 
as we see the Italian crew celebrating as they cross the line. A confirmation there that it is Italy with that win in the lightweight men's four ahead of the Russian Federation, Germany and the People's Republic of China pushed down into fourth ahead of Hungary and the home favourites, the United States of America.